on this podcast today. We're very excited to be broadcasting live from the Lure Riel Arts and Technology Center's broadcast media studio with the wondrous production team here. And it's one program of 13 that are in the Arts and Tech Center where students come to do some extra learning, some technical learning, some applied learning that gives them a leg up on their career pathing. Great programming, really fortunate. I'm your, to be your host, I'm Adriano Magnifico. I'm the Career and Entrepreneurship Consultant at Louisville School Division. And I am ably joined by Isabella Sorez, who is one of the students in the broadcast media program. And how are you doing, Isabella? I'm doing well. How's your week going? Oh, it's been pretty hectic actually, because um, Anna, she has been like exposed to like COVID. Uh, in her workplace so then she didn't come to like classes and radio and we are in charge of radio this week and then lily she um is like our fellow producer over here in the podcast she had an appointment to go to so i've been all over the place today so yeah she's a lone producer here today and of course she's talking about lily chen who is her co-producer who due to the vicissitudes of life has to attend to a personal matter, which is no problem. She's one of our great producers. We're happy. But on this podcast today, we're super fortunate because not only do we have our regular Isabella and the Cracker Jack team that works at the Broadcast Media Studio, we're live, of course. We have Andre Bazin. Andre Bazin is a young entrepreneur. Andre, say hi to the gang. Hey, guys. How's it going? And Andres is a former student of mine from the old Nelson Mack era, way back. When was your graduation year? 2016, I believe. Six, 16, yeah, right 16. there. So, so it's, this year, coming June, will be five years. And I can say about Andre that he is a student who, in his four years since 2016, He's done more than most people might do by the time they're 30, and he's a young man. So I'm always very proud of him. He's one of these other, <laughs> these other little sons I have that, with, that, uh, with whom I build relationships over time in school who go on to do interesting things. So Andre, super happy to have you here. This whole podcast is about student stories and about their pathing and how they make decisions and why they make them. So I'm super interested. Do you remember about about you telling some of the story about when I met you in grade 11 and he was buddies with yeah. Bilal, who was a previous guest on this show, who was one of those Laura, Loran scholars. But when we met, I met Andres as a guy who um, was a 70, 80 percent student. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Kind yeah. of doing. And again, we've talked about that in that broadcast, that average in school where nobody bothers you. You're doing all the work. You're not messing up. People aren't bothering you and you're not getting the top awards, but you're doing okay. And you're doing what everybody does, but you were into your body. Your body was your temple. You were constantly Absolutely. working out, but you remember that time in grade 11, tell us a little bit about what you were thinking about as a grade 11 about pathing and where you think you might go. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of interesting. I guess I was just a huge athlete. I was like a, a jock my whole life. I played almost a dozen sports. Uh, as you said, like I was huge into the gym. Actually, the reason why I was so big into the gym is in grade 10, I won the athlete of the year award. And then two weeks later in gym class, I actually blew out my knee and was awaiting a surgery. So I sat out my entire grade 11 year. Uh, so essentially, instead of spending time on the court in the field, I actually just went hardcore in the gym and I just got really into that. So I became the guy who was walking around with a protein shaker all the time and figuring out ways to make <laughs> everyday activities something to build muscle. <laughs> you know, drop a pencil, I'd go down and do a push up to pick it up just because. <laughs> um, and so I had no idea where I was going to go. I, 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 I live by the stereotype of jock. Uh, I'm not dumb, but I'm not a 90s average student or uh, yeah, 90s average student. Um, and a big thing then with law is uh, a huge, lots of seminars and uh, uh, career expos on getting into the trade. So I figured I'd be, I'd go into trades, I'd try electrician. And it was kind of funny because my family, uh, obviously they've been a huge support for me, but the, the, the funny aspect of it was my sister was a nineties GPA. She graduated in 96 and everyone's like, Katie, you're so smart. You should go be a, a doctor or a lawyer. And then they'd look at me and be like, Andre, you should be trades. And I was like, <laughs> okay, let's get trades. I heard it makes good money. I know, but Andre, um, isn't that funny, right? Like they think, <laughs> I, I mean, the, the 90 the ninety plus averages in high school, 
everybody gets excited about and everybody thinks you can do whatever you like. Yeah. You're a super smart kid. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Wasn't totally engaged by school the way your sister may have been, but yeah. immediately parents go to that. And I've done it with my own children. So I'm yeah. speaking from experience. <laughs> immediately they think, gee, the kid's a 70, 60 percenter, uh, 75 percenter. Have you tried trades? Yeah. And your kids look at you like, why do you think I want to work with my hands because I don't have a 90 yeah. average? So that's a killer, yeah. right? It, that's hilarious. And, and I could, yeah, and I can see how it would tie into because I just naturally I'm a very like high energy tempo person. So working in trades, you know, it's kind of fast paced and it is physical work, so it kind of relates to sports. But uh, if you know me today, like I'm really big into kind of like fashion. I like wearing suits. I like wearing nice stuff. And like my family teases because uh, if I come home and it's snowing, I have to go change the shovel because I don't want to shovel in my nice work clothes. So like being in trades and imagine working in like heavy like steel toe boots and being in that environment would just not totally vibe with my personality <laughs> at all so it's kind of funny well i can see your instagram posts and and some of your uh your <laughs> you're more into instagram you're always dressed in one of those nice suits right you're one of those young guys yeah. who sculpted your body with all this great you, ate, you always <laughs> ate the right food you are always working yeah, it's out pretty hard for it. you were all you were hard when you say hardcore like you were one of those kids who who took care those parts of uh Covey would call you always was sharpening your saw you were keeping yourself yeah. sharp your body uh physically uh mentally you're you're always kind of keeping yourself sharp i always admired that about you how how did other kids react to you as that guy who was kind of the personal trainer walking around Nelson Mack? Um, it's actually kind of funny. Like at, the main reason why I wanted to work out is because one, I had nothing to do. I enjoy the sports, but naturally like my family lineage were super small people. Um, and like I was tiny, tiny and I was really skinny. So it sucked on like some sports like basketball, you know, I'd get pushed around the court. So I was tired of that. So I got really big into the gym. And at first people were just like poke jokes at me and be like, oh yeah, you're just a skinny guy, skinny guy. Um, and so I actually kind of conned everybody. I wore baggy clothes. I wore sweats and sweaters for about four months straight. And over those four months, I put on 20 pounds. Uh, and then one day I came to school with a fitted shirt and everyone was like jaw dropping. Like, um, and it was just, everybody respected it. And then from that point on, people were just like, anytime they had questions about the gym, they would, uh, tell me about it uh, or ask me about it. It was weird. There was sometimes a few people who I didn't even know. They're like, Hey, I started working out and they would just come and tell me that like, Cool. Don't know why you're telling me that, but like all the power to you. I hope it goes well. Yeah, you um, became. So it was yeah. kind of cool. It, yeah, yeah. Became you became that guy. You became scared. that guy. You became the god of fitness yeah. at the school. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, this is really interesting yeah. because, uh, like you're saying, that you started to you know work out more and all that. Do you feel like your confidence also changed because you said that you really liked you really like fashion and all that, and you used to like wear baggy clothes and all that. Um, how has this like shift to having like a more healthy lifestyle, uh, mentally, physically help you, you know, grow more as in yourself into your own skin? Yeah, no, I think, uh, the best way that helps is, um, I remember actually Adriana, you said this in one of your English classes, how sports is the greatest metaphor. And that's why there's so many great stories around sports. Um, and I think the gym is that too. It's such a phenomenal metaphor to every single cliche and a lot of lessons. Um, and how it really helped me is I really learned the value of time um, and trusting the process because you can't go to the gym for two weeks and get results. You have to go for like two, three months to get results. So and then it was after I went there for like four or five months, I started seeing things I was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. I learned the value of consistency. Um, and then even when people were kind of razzing me at first, but then they started, you know, being like, hey, like you did it. Congratulations. Respect you for that. It kind of gave me that like, yeah, like, doesn't matter what people say, like, why do I need somebody else's permission to do what I want? So when it came to wanting to wear suits, when, you know, I was hanging out with, uh, when I'm like on the basketball team, everybody would be wearing, uh, you know, your typical athlete clothing where you're wearing like track pants or sweats and joggers and stuff like that. But I want to wear like nice fitted chinos and they'd be like, oh, you know, <laughs> tight fitted chinos. But I'm like, no, I'm totally into that. Like, I look good and I know I look good and it's not your style, but that's fine. Like, your style looks great too, but you know, it's, it's whatever you want it to be. But it, so it, on that yeah. aspect, it just taught a lot of lessons. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I remember a few times you were trying to get, yeah, like you did a lot of things after high school, in fact, but it was funny. Like when you yeah. were doing that, sometimes you'd wear the tight fitting 
outfits and those only work on certain people i'll be i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> they work on you but but you were bugging me sometimes hey we'll get you into a nice because you were you were uh kind of working with f apparel which is one of the winnipeg's yeah um yeah like classic suit places for young people. You were saying, Magnifico, get into one of these suits. And I kept bugging you. There's no way with my Italian pasta gut, I can wear that suit. And I wouldn't even know where to put my wallet on this suit. It'd be so tight. It'd be, it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> it was funny. But I just love that you took that on. And it blossomed into this, just like Isabella is saying, it blossomed into this extra level of confidence about you. I'm not sure you'd be the same yeah. person without you dedicating yourself oh, and not. committing yourself to that kind of uh, workout and that kind of regimen. I, I was, I was really yeah. proud of you for doing that. That was cool. And it's, uh, it's kind of tough. Like disclaimer now, if you see me in the street, I look nothing like a gym guy. I've probably lost a lot of my weight and I, my gym regimen is like super bad right now. Um, part of it was just the life of like, you know, starting up a business and stuff like that. It takes a toll on you. And then obviously COVID itself and, uh, so it is something that I want to get back into, but it is something that's crazy when I've, you know, I've been two months without like hitting actually like a really good workout. And then even if I went for like a 10 minute jog, just like that rush comes back to you and you're just like, oh my goodness, like this does make a huge impact. And like, if you want to stay sharp, this is a huge aspect. And like, I get it all the time. Like my girlfriend's studying to be a doctor in naturopathic medicine. So she's, uh, she's on me all the time about it. And it's, uh, so it's funny. So I hear it from, I get it from everywhere and it, it is, it's, it's a huge, uh, huge benefit to life on uh, whether it's confidence or even just your performance, making, keeping you mentally and physically sharp. Hey, well, that was, you know what? Your life was interesting though. Like that allowed us, remember when I was around in that school for during your time, I was trying to start up some of those career, de career programs and I yeah. targeted you and targeted <laughs> Bilal and a number of other people. And it's grown significantly. Nelson Mack's done great. Uh, the other teacher with whom I worked, Ryan Sabrin is keeping it going. And it's a, re a really powerful program at that school, Nelson Mack. Yeah. But you chose... Well, that's actually what, how, uh... well, what, tell me about some of the activities you did in that program that were kind of life-altering for you. Think of the yeah. JA program. Uh, Remember so... the JA program? Oh, man. The JA. So there's a few things that led up to the JA program, and I'll talk about actually how important those were and how it made such a difference. Uh, so when I was in grade 11 is when you kind of came with this career development Um I think the first event we went to was Red River had a business and environmental conference panel board yeah. and there was like tons of schools and it was at the uh, Notre Dame campus. Um, and <laughs> I, I would like to say things have changed, but they haven't changed too much. Uh, I, I'm very much so I show up, not always hundred percent prepared. Um, I forgot that I was actually a, a panel, like being on the panel as a guest speaker and there's about 400 people. Um, and I bust there and I got there and it was like 8.30 and Miss Cook was the teacher there. She's like, are you ready? She's like, you're on in 15 minutes. And I'm like, on what? And she's like, you're going to go up on stage and talk. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, and I remember Bilal was there. It was me and him. And like, we sat there while everybody was talking. We didn't listen to what anybody said. And we just literally came up with like, what can I say in my minutes or my 10 minutes, however long I'm talking? Uh, I have 15 minutes to figure it out before I go up there. Um, and it was the first time I ever had like really good public uh, public speaking experience. And there was like, like 400 students and teachers combined. And uh, yeah, within 15 minutes, I got ready, went up there and had a five, 10 minute thing. And I think it was Dave Angus was running it. Uh, and uh, he said I had, there was a kid, I don't know if you remember this, but he was trying to banter back and forth with me and we were kind of going at it. Um, and I said a really good line and I forget what it was. And it kind of put him in a spot and clapped and cheered. And Dave Angus came up and I said, yeah, he's like, I think that was like the quote of the day. Um, so like that to me was just like, this is awesome. This is a high that I want to chase. Like, you know what I mean? Like this was phenomenal. Um, so the next after that probably was the Tiger's Den con, uh, conference that you do where it's kind of like mini dragons den and we got to start a business. And I was lucky enough that my team voted me as team lead, uh, which is super cool. And then we actually won gold and we won that. So that to me just excited. And I was like, Hey, I love this. You know, I had that experience with, uh, at the Red River, at the, the conference I've had this Tiger's um, I think there was a few other things that we looked and dabbled into and I was just like, you know, I love this. This is great. I'm going to go all in on this. And I remember when you brought up JA, I remember I said this to, I forget which one of my friends it was. Um, and we were all in the basketball team. And that year we were actually looking to have like a championship team and we actually ended up going to the finals, but before the season even started, I remember I looked at my friend and I was like, I want to do this JA so bad. I'm like, if I have to quit basketball and not play, I will do this. And that's coming from the kid a year before who was nothing but a jock who was still a meathead um, and only played sports <laughs> and was thinking, I'm just going to end up in trades. I was at, I was so committed to this program before. So I said, I'm doing this because this sounds like it's going to be what I want and I'm going to make something of it. 
Um, and I was prepared to, yeah, if I said, if I have to sit on the sideline, I will sit on the sideline. Luckily, I didn't have to, and I got to play uh, everything that I wanted to. So fortunate in that aspect. But yeah, so JA was an absolute phenomenal. Like the experience on that was super cool. It's super. And when we um, say JA for really, people listening, that was a, it's the junior achievement program in which high school students yeah. gather and run a real small business. And it takes place. I love the activity because it really is a lean startup it start it takes about five or six months to do to plan to to prototype to create to sell to market to, all those pieces are involved and they they have a they have a dollar value at the end that tells you mm -hmm. what kind of success you're having which is really interesting that you know the the financial success but all the successes what did that teach you that program because you were the president oh you boy. were the president of that yeah. uh, of our team um whew. Taught, it teaches you a lot. So it really teaches you about organization. Um, we like our, our biggest challenge is we made a product that was super hard to make. Like it was well, not super hard to make, but it was very labor intensive. Um, so when it came up to having the trade shows and getting it to trade shows, um, planning out a schedule of like how many do we need to have, um, how much time does it take to do that? When you go to one trade show and you have another one coming up, we would. I remember we were talking when it was Saint Patel Mall versus Kildonan uh, Place. Um, it's like, okay, so Kildonan Place gets about X amount of traffic. We asked people from the years previous, what kind of traffic did they expect? So we take those numbers and find a multiplier to add it to ours to figure out how much inventory we think we should have based on that. So you're doing projections, all this stuff. Uh, the fun part was, it was the sales part. You know, like we're standing in the mall. There, there's maybe 10 or 12 other schools there with you. And it's a trade show and you're just selling, you're just pitching, you're getting people to buy. Um, you're pulling people off left and right. I learned all these little sales gimmicks. Um, we kind of, I, I wouldn't say dirty, but clever. Uh, one of the things we did is ours fitted on us. Our, we had those, uh, those luggage tags. The we didn't tag. have a luggage the my tag. Yeah, we called so, it my tag. yeah. So we didn't have any luggage. So I went down to Bentley luggage. I bought $300 worth of luggage. I told the guy, I'll be back in six hours to return this. I just need it for six hours for a display prop. And he was like, okay. So I went and did that. Um, I made a sign or LED sign and I had it, yeah, I had it with LED. So it was really bright. Um, and I, I would, if somebody was at the booth beside us, I would turn the LED sign to flash them so that they would have this eye, this light pestering guy and they'd look over and I'd be there waiting like, hi, you want to come over here? Um, so stuff like that, it was just, <laughs> it was just fun. Like we just learned like all these little tricks of getting it and just even taking people through the sales process. Um, we sold Oh, hundreds, you know, I remember we ended up with thousands of dollars in sales and it was unbelievable. It was this little $5 uh, luggage tag and I don't get, I don't get how we sold that many. Um, personally, I felt like I would have never bought one myself, but we were able to push it and sell it and it was great. <laughs> hey, you got to believe in your product, so, buddy. Got to believe in your own product. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Nice right. So. Well, I, I'm loving to hear like your experiences um, in high school as a leader in various activities like Tiger's Den. There was also junior achievements. So yeah. um, I have a brother and he's also an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, and we've cool. always seen him growing up to be so, a, an entrepreneur. I wanted to know from you what moments um, in this uh, maybe high in these high school years were pivotal for you to figure out that you were an entrepreneur and you weren't just a regular student who will um like i'm not the best student in high school so i'll just go on to do trades yeah um well boy i guess a lot of it would have been ja uh and the reason for that would have been it, it just spoke to my personality like the best thing with business is the creative aspect where you really do get to create something um, not only do you create it, you create how it gets to market, how it's presented, how you follow up with customers. Like you're creating absolutely everything. You're more than just a clog. You are the machine uh, or cog. Yeah, you're more the machine. Um, so that was just a huge thing. And I guess Jay was really the thing where it bit me with the entrepreneurial bug. And I'm like, I'm 100% willing to do this. And I think the other thing is, is uh, I was also working too. And I was working in banquets and it was a really good job. Um, but also with your first job, you learn a lot of lessons. I really learned the value of good hard work, but then you also learn the value of like, you know, depending on the lifestyle you want, a nine to five job doesn't give you always, a nine to five will give you this type of life or entrepreneur will give you the other type of life. And they both have their pros and cons. Um, and I was just, I was 
well okay to accept the cons of the entrepreneurial life and i really wanted the pros of it so that really helped me make that decision as well so you were talking about banquets you worked at uh the saint boniface saint golf boniface course. golf yeah Correct. and yeah. you worked for that for a couple of years and you became a go-to guy there because of your work ethic yeah i became the banquet man or banquet captain was the word i didn't uh they wanted me to uh, come in for the banquet manager position. There was some talk about that, but it just never went. I just went a different route. But yeah, it was great. I worked up my way from server. Um, it was it was phenomenal. It was my first job, and I definitely came in with the right attitude. And I think that's a huge thing too. Is when you're approaching things, it's coming with the attitude of, I'm going to commit. I'm going to crush this, and I want to be number one. Um, and I did. I they gave me all the shifts I wanted. Uh, I was the one who was getting raises when raises would come around. I was one of only a few others who would get, you know, a small year end bonus, which was like 50 bucks because it's a part-time job, but it's better than nothing. And it was just that taste of, I put in work, it was recognized. And when it, we get recognized, it feels good. Um, so yeah, it was a great job. I get learned, you learn, I learned a lot. It was kind of cool because uh, we would work till three in the morning. You know, somebody's wedding would end at one and you have two hours to clean it up and stuff set up wedding the morning or the morning after um but it was me i can like maybe one or two other high school students and a couple university students so really about a four-person team a three-person team closing it down um and we're all 22 and under 23 and under and we were essentially running someone's wedding you know helping food orders go out at night uh wedding cake making sure the gifts and guests are happy bar is stocked uh closing inventories all this so like you really got to see and it was a huge sense of responsibility like i was 16 years old and i was made up 25% of the team that made sure somebody's wedding was a success, not a flop. So, you know, weddings are a huge moment. Uh, hopefully people plan to only get married once. Uh, so you really wanted to make sure you did a good job and it was phenomenal. And I had a great boss, like my boss, uh, she's phenomenal. And she's actually now has her own business in the wedding industry in Winnipeg and is absolutely crushing it. So I actually got to surround myself with some really good people, even though it wasn't a career I wanted, I just got to be part of an awesome team and a great experience. And that's while well, you're talking about some powerful things, eh? you meet all these people who are great influences. They model their, they yeah. model the work ethic that you want. They model some of the, Absolutely. some of the ex skills that, that, that you want to grab. Now you, in high school, you decided to forego going to school, more school. So you, uh, yes you took a no. gap year. You took a gap year, didn't you? Even though I, I was a, saying I took to a you. took a gap year because I, I actually, I okay. registered, I registered for Red River right after high school. I went to day one orientation um, and I got the bejesus scared out of me and I dropped out. <laughs> I was like, okay, oh what's, God, I'm not what ready. scared you? What uh, scared you? <laughs> That's a fascinating story. Uh, what scares you? Because a lot of kids go to that yeah. experience and they feel exactly the same way. You said, I'm not ready. What scared you and why did you wait? Well, so what it was is I knew I. I knew I wanted to go to school, but I didn't want to want to go to school. I just knew I was like, this is the next step and I should probably do it. Um, I wasn't fully ready. I wasn't fully committed. I wasn't completely sold on the idea of going to school. Um, and then the second thing is, is I didn't prepare myself. So I didn't know how intensive the Red River program is. Like, you know, I've heard of friends who, you know, if you go to U of M or UW, people will have a part-time job. Uh, if you have a part-time job at Red River, you're either going to fail the course or you're an absolute super person by any means that's usually the how it happens so i went there and the orientation the professor was telling me he was like if you have what's it called he's like if you have a job uh and you think you're gonna work he says that's not happening he says you gotta call your job tell them you're quitting right now or tell them you're only working one shift a week on saturdays um and i was like oh my goodness like financially i'm not prepared for this um i didn't save up enough money to like i had enough money to just get through tuition but i didn't have enough money to carry me through without working um and then at that time too i also had a car uh, where I had some payments on it that I like just a personal loan that I took out. You loved um, your car. So I was looking you loved like, your car. I did. I did. did. It was a stupid decision. I should have never like looking back. I should have never bought it. It was, it was a great car. What kind of, what kind of um, car was it? You're always working on that car in the shop. Yeah, it was a Nissan Altima. So it's kind of the, it's a family sedan, but yeah, the cool it, aspect is I had it. It was the, it was the Nismo edition. So it's, it came from like Nissan's like race factory. So it's I know. So, so you, up on that aspect. You, you, so it was fun. It was fun. You had a seeped, a souped up Altima. That was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. it, it, it it is what it is. Um, I got, like looking back on a financial decision, I should never have bought that. Memories wise, I'm so glad I had it. Like me and the friends had so much fun with that car. Um, but yeah, so like that's why it scared the bejeebas on me. So I wasn't fully committed to whatever. I was like, yeah, I should probably do this. This is the next step. And then once this guy was like, welcome to you know Marines training. It's going to be intense. I was like, not for me. I'm out. And I and I walked away. <laughs> uh, 
And then what did you do though? I can't do this. (laughs) But then what did you do? You knew you knew your family wouldn't tolerate you sitting around doing nothing, right? Yeah. So I continued working at F Apparel and Banquets while I looked for a job, and uh, come that right at the beginning of November, I think it was right after Remembrance Day, if I remember correctly, started selling cars. So I got a job with a Ford dealership, um, and I was a sales and leasing consultant. So I started my career in car sales. it was it was a wild ride. Uh, like, um, what did you learn about cars? Uh, what did you learn about ex- selling cars? Oh, it, 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 that is that is a handful. It is nothing like you would ever expect. Um, you learn. So we went from JA from selling five dollar tags to trying to convince <laughs> someone to buy a seven thousand dollar loaded truck. Uh, very very different sales process. Um, the technical details. You know, there's so many so much to a vehicle, um, especially when it comes to trucks. You know, there's the quarter ton, half ton, full ton. Wheelbase makes a difference. Payload, depending on the engine, the transmission, the gear ratios. So you have to become an absolute expert on the product. Um, so short term, we call it PK product knowledge. So you have to be, become an expert on that. Um, but then you also got to be good with people. Like I made the mistake where I just kept selling on features and I kept listing all the things the car had. But people don't care about that. People know what they want. They know what they like. You know oh, this has leather seats, you know, they can see that. So I kind of learned how to change the sales process because whereas my tag, I had to explain everything. They didn't know what the product was. But when someone's coming in to buy a car, they know what a car is. Um, they just want to know that's the right car for them. Uh, I learned a ton about finance uh, on the vehicles and insurance because there's a lot to do with that. Uh, and the other thing that was interesting too is uh, you really, really good people skills because you got to find ways to get people in front of you, whether it's cold calling, whether it's going out uh, doing lot walks when people are out there shaking hands. Um, and then the other thing too is, is usually people come in with the idea that you're the bad guy and you're the enemy and that you're a jerk and they're to rip them off. So you've got to, you know, help them lower their guard and be like, Hey, I'm just me. I'm Andre. I'm a guy here to help you. If you want to buy a car, I'll help you. If not, that's cool. I don't care. I'm not trying to rip you off. Um, so that experience itself is really good. And the environment too is, is very interesting. Like it's, it's, um, it's what sales jobs sound like, very cutthroat and very uh, and competitive. So, you know, as an 18-year-old guy with, uh, you know, men who are in their 30s and 40s who've been doing this for 10, 20 years, um, pulling all the tricks on me and, you know, being full-on competitive and not taking any pressure off just because I'm a young kid because they see me as a threat to putting food on their table because uh, if I sell, that means they didn't. So it really – it really – add some tough skin to you, but then it also makes you really realize what you don't want. And I didn't love that to me. I, I, there's an abundance out there and I'm not out there to, you know, compete and step on other people's toes to get ahead. So that's how I eventually kind of left after the eight months, uh, just the toxic environment for me. That's pretty cool. But you know what? I was checking, you know what? You and I check up on each other every once in a while and we chat. It's always, it's always a great thing. It's always a good old time. Yeah. It's a good time. And we always chat for a long time. And then one day I see you're in Toronto. What were you doing in Toronto? That was yeah. Cool. So how I got how I got to Toronto. Um, after I sold cars, I quit when I because I was applying for jobs and I found this job that paid super good. It was a marketing position. It was for a brand ambassador. Um, I thought it was full time. It was three gigs in the summer. I didn't know that. And I walked into my manager's office and quit before I found out. So I went home and found out and I was like, Oh my goodness, I may have just shot myself in the foot. Uh, so I got a job as a brand ambassador and brand ambassador is probably like the coolest job. I say every student who ever wants to be in business or make good money should do it. Um, essentially you are just Mr. Happy. That's all you're supposed to do is you're supposed to make the brands feel good. You help them through experiences. Like for instance, uh, one of the clients that I worked with with an agency was Dairy Farmers of Canada. So we want they wanted to create an experience around dairy. So how did you do that? Well, you sample dairy products. So we showed up to Folk Fest with a fully custom food truck, and we were making grilled cheese sandwiches from gourmet Bothwell cheese, and we were giving out free grilled cheese sandwiches at Folk Fest. If you want to talk about people loving you and thinking you're their best <laughs> friend, you go to Folk Fest and give out a thousand grilled cheese sandwiches for free. Oh my um, gosh. I did stuff like that. I did gigs with Toyota where they partnered with a kid's go-karting event. Then after the kids would go-kart, um, I would take the parents in a brand new Toyota from the from the, their lineup and I'd take them on the go-kart track and I'd be like, let's shape capabilities of Toyota. So we would do skid steering, we would do brake tests, and we would do like drag race to show them the acceleration, just all these crazy things. Um, so here I am, 18, 19 years old, uh, making really good money, driving 
Toyota's on a closed track uh, just to show what it can do. And you're just there to put a smile on people's face and help generate leads and create really good will. Um, so that led me, I've worked with, oh boy, about a dozen agencies through that. And one of the agencies um, that I became really good with, uh, I actually moved to Toronto and did a four month contract as an account coordinator in their head office. Uh, over uh, becoming the account coordinator to oversee these events. So I went from the infield person who executes what we call activations um, to moving to Toronto to actually uh, oversee, help build and manage these activations and make sure the success. So that's, uh, that's how I ended up in Toronto. It was, it was fantastic. That's amazing. I remember talking to you about that and uh, I never quite got the depth of it until you started elaborating. Like that's incredible. Like when yeah. you say any, Oh, a young it's... person ought to try that who's into business or marketing. Yeah. Like, look yeah. at the network you built. Can you call these people back? Do you feel like there's a lot of people you could continue to liaise with and, and converse with on, on anything? Related Absolutely. To yeah. I've made so many good relations through that. Um, and the other thing is, is, yeah, like even in Toronto, I remember there's a few times I was, when I moved to Toronto, I was walking through Toronto, which is crazy to think you're walking through this metropolitan with like over 10 million people uh, and account coordinators from other companies that I used to work with in Winnipeg would see you know, like, you're Andre from Winnipeg. I'm like, yeah, they're like, Hey, it's so-and-so from such a place. I'm like, Oh, it's so nice to put a face to the name. See you later. Jump on the sub. And it was like, you know, it really made a huge impact. And there's, there's those people, like even with the, my job now, one of the coordinators from a company that I worked with that I had a really good relationship moved into the same industry that I am. And actually we were trying to put together a partnership between our two companies. Um, even though he's in Toronto and I'm in Winnipeg. So it's actually, yeah, it's opened a lot of doors. I mean, even just the BAs cool. I work with, it's like a lot of these BAs, you get BAs from all walks of life. Like one of the BAs, she was a culinary chef. She studied food in France and was starting her business um, and was doing BA work on the side because it's flexible and makes good money while she was starting her uh, like culinary company. So you need someone like that. I've met other people who are studying to be a doctor. I've met other people who are in economics. And then I've met people who are just like nomads where they're just like, yeah, like, you know, I'm going to do a BA work this summer in Winnipeg and then the money I make, I'm going to go to Banff and then I'm going to figure out where I end up after that. So it's like, Pretty that's cool. Cool. so you meet all walks of life. Yeah. So I guess you'd say completely and utterly that it's important to jump into yeah. stuff. It's important to try out stuff because what you did, even when you talked from way back in the JA, when you decided to make calls, you weren't even on that wavelength when I met you in grade 11. Like how you yeah. moved and developed and how you have found things that, I always talk about how you started collecting your dots before you started yeah, connecting absolutely. them. You collected so many dots that you began to see more and more possibility for yourself. I think it's cool. Yeah. So when you went to Red River, you felt ready to go to Red River. There's a great message yeah, here about so you're being scared. You went out and experienced life, but you just didn't sit back. You experienced it. You went out there and collected a lot of dots. Then oh, you went 100%. back to Red River. When you applied to Red River again, how did you feel? I was determined. And I think that was a huge impact. And something that really taught me. Uh, this kind of goes back to what Isabel was talking about, like how did the gym help? Uh, learning about that consistency, I kind of applied that to Red River. Um, and I came in so ready to go to Red River. I was like, I want to go to Red River. I want to get good grades. As you mentioned earlier, I never really fully applied myself to school. Um, I graduated with a GPA of just under 80. So I didn't get honors and when I graduated high school. Um, and I said, I'm going to get this. I'm going to study hard. I'm going to get the best grades I can. And I actually ended up meeting an old Nelson Mack alum, a guy who graduated like 15 years before me. Uh, and he was in his thirties and we're really good friends to this day. And it was really cool because I'm this new kid who's starting this venture and saying, I want to commit cause I want to go forward in life. And he's saying, I never went to school. I climbed the ladder, but kind of like peaked. And he says, I want to get my education so that I can further my career. So we kind of became really good friends and took it. Um, and I crushed it. Like the first time ever I got, I graduated that semester with a 4.1 GPA. My final grades were all A's and a, I had four A's and two A pluses. So like just well, phenomenal grades. Well, and you were doing great and there. And, great. And, and, and you know what freaked me out about that? Like uh, I help out at Red River in their <laughs> entrepreneurial showcase sometime. I'm one of the yeah. judges. And I also adjudicate some of their business plans from time to time. And I was at the entrepreneurial showcase and I'm assigned a couple of booths to check out and learn about their product and to, and to assess and, and offer some evaluation. And there's a stage right behind me and I'll never forget this. 
and there's someone talking on the stage and i'm thinking i know that voice who is that voice you're on the stage addressing the crowd at the showcase. Yeah. Do you remember that? And I thought, oh, my God, yeah. that's Andre's up there. He's leading the whole room. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, was, I, I, I was so proud of you. I thought it, it, it was just amazing. That, it, it was a great yeah, moment. Yeah, it was cool because in the crowd was the uh, economic development, the econo Minister of Economic Development of Canada, the, the gentleman yes. came from Ottawa. So it's yes. like that was super cool to have him there. I was on stage um, – Talk, uh, when we were on stage, we were in chairs and we were waiting to go up. There's a bunch of students beside me and there's a lady beside me and I lean over. I'm like, hey. And I'm like, my name's Andre. I'm like, who are you? She's like, oh, I should really remember her name. But she's like, oh, I'm so-and-so. She's like, I'm the vice president of education of Red River. I was like, I was like Pleasure to meet you. It was like, it was like super cool. And then like, I, I, I jump up on I stage. I know. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was so cool. Feel. It was so cool. And I thought, yeah. this is what Andre does. He meets people. He connects with them. They bring them up on stage, metaphorically and literally. Yeah. They bring you yeah. to new stages, and suddenly yeah. I see you blossom up there. And I was just, I stopped and looking up there, I went, this kid was nothing in grade 11. He was searching for oh, something, something to do. Come on. <laughs> you, you were searching yeah. for something to do, right? And yeah. suddenly I just see you blossom in there. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I think absolutely. it's so cool how you talked about so many different experiences that you had um, in different areas, like different jobs. Um, and mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, um, and you took your own path into entrepreneurship. Um, there are a lot of ways that you can go to this, but um, from what you have learned yourself, what would be your word of advice for someone who wants to start becoming an entrepreneur and they don't know exactly where to start or what path to sure. take from what you've gone through what can you um help these people figure it out yeah um so there would be no one answer to that obviously there's multiple so i'll just kind of like summarize as best as i can Ooh, i guess i think the first thing i would say is when you're really trying to figure something out uh become an expert listener a lot of people don't really like i felt like it wasn't until i was about 20 years old i really learned what actually listening and ha like sitting with somebody being receptive and like fully understanding all the information they've given you uh because a lot of times people when they listen they're just waiting to say what they want to say next and that doesn't help you um because the thing is is if you really learn to listen next thing you want to do is you want to surround yourself with people who've been there so people who are you know 10 20 30 40 years old people who are retired um people have a ton of knowledge and you just want want to figure out as much as you can about them, uh, their experiences. Everybody will think they have the answer, or some people won't think they have the answer, but the thing is, is there is no right or wrong answer. There's just variables to that answer. Um, so really just listen to people, figure it out, um, and then commit. Just figure out something to do to commit to. Um, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do it and figure out what it is to give yourself a good solid time. As I mentioned earlier at the gym, you know, you can go to the gym for a week. You won't see anything after a week. You might feel a little good. Uh, or feel a little better, but it might won't do anything. So give yourself, I'm going to commit to this for two hours every day after work for a solid month. Um, and after that, you'll see a ton of progress um, or you won't, you realize you love it or you hate it. Um, so do that. And then I think the second thing is and that I think a lot of kids might struggle with because this is something that I kind of, I wouldn't say struggled with, but I realize it influences you a lot when you're young is you don't have to get permission from people to do something. Uh, I find so many times parents don't do this or don't do that. Um, aunts, uncles, friends, cousins, elders, you know, even teachers when I was in high school, sometimes I'd say, yeah, I'm thinking of doing this. They say, oh, you do that. This will happen. This will happen. I'm sorry. Do you have a crystal ball? How do you know that's going to happen? Just do what feels right for you. You don't need to ask people for permission. Uh, when I moved to Toronto, my mom did not want me to move to Toronto. Of course she doesn't want, I'm her youngest, so I'm her baby. She's like, I don't want you moving to Toronto. I said, mom, I'm moving to Toronto whether you like it or not, because this is going to be the best experience I've ever had. And I, I would have regretted 100% if I didn't move to Toronto. Um, even uh, when I took a gap year, people were like, oh my God, why take a gap year? Why take a gap year? I felt so confident that I knew that was the right thing because I knew I wasn't prepared and I knew I didn't 100% want it. Um, and I knew if I was going to be going there, I'd just be kind of diddle dawdling. Um, so I don't need your permission not to go to school because at the end of the day, it's my life. And at the end of the day, it's me who's going to school and having to study and get those grades. And if I don't get those grades, it's me who has to live with that transcript. So Mm -hmm. I'm making the decisions for me. Um, so those are some things I would offer to it. Um, and then the other thing is, is figure out what you're doing right now. Like what can you be doing right now to get yourself better? Like 
we school is so valuable but the thing is is when you're in high school you could be doing so much more to get you further for instance if you have an interest in marketing isabella right as soon as this is done if you have any interest in marketing you can go to google adwords certificate and take the 10 hours to get a google ad certificate and you can be certified in google ads by this weekend you don't need to be graduated. They don't ask for a high school diploma. All you have to do is be able to read the, the English, the basic English on the thing, um, which essentially anybody who's 12 years or older can read that and comprehend what they're talking about. Um, so finding stuff like that, you know, there's pages like Udemy, LinkedIn Learning, um, all that. Uh, getting back to what I was saying about surrounding yourself with the right people, the biggest thing that I try and tell kids today that are in high school is your biggest advantage is usually what you think your biggest disadvantage is. And that is the fact that you're a high school student. Right if on. you have an interest in a career, whether it's an engineer, a lawyer, being a business person or a mechanic, if you were to call somebody at a law firm and being like, hey, I'm Andre, I'm in grade 11. I have interest in being a lawyer. I'm trying to figure out a path. Can I come down to your office and have lunch with you? Or can I come shout at you for a day? Nine out of 10 times, they're probably gonna say yes, because the fact is, is you're, a 16 year old kid, if they say no to you, it says more about them than it says about you asking. Um, they're usually open to it because they're more than happy to. And the other thing is, is you can start a relation because say you do become uh, a lawyer and you go through the process, every six months, every year as you're going through that, you can constantly reach out to them. And when you're looking for a job, that's some way that might be able to hire you. That might be somebody who's available in your corner to bat for you. Um, so take advantage of that, really understand your environment understand that like when you're in high school you have a ton of resources available to you um so like graphics labs you know softwares like adobe illustrator and photoshop you know when i use those now i have to pay the subscription monthly to, to use those those were free in high school i wish i would have just taken more time to use those and take advantage of them while i had it um as well as like i said when i was in high school just using that to extend the phone call and asking people hey can i you know come shadow hang out for a bit and learn um so that's kind of how i'd wrap it up uh in a bow of what I would do to somebody who wants to go that route is just just jump in. You know, there's no wrong spot to jump in. There's no right spot to jump in. The, the bottom line is, is you just have to get in the water and start swimming. You know what's cool about what you said, and I don't know if you you're not even noticing it, but you're constantly using the word "figure it out." The t the phrase "figure yeah. it out." And, <laughs> you know what? It's a powerful statement about you believe you can do anything as long as you can figure it out. And that's yeah, always a that's powerful, so I always say that to kids when we're doing the tiger's den, the answer to everything in the tiger's den is yes, as long as you can figure it out. And that's the great challenge where kids have to develop that sense of confidence and that sense of, uh, possibility in them to say, yeah, I'm going to go figure that out. Like you talked about the Google ad piece. You can go figure mm -hmm. that out. The other thing I thought was cool. And I remember saying this to you guys all the time, you are a rock star in high school and you don't even know it. There is no one who will say no to you. And I've set up over 2000 internships and job shadows. They don't say no. The minute you turn 18, <laughs> you become yeah, part of the herd. Story. You become part of the herd. And yeah. you, it's, it's hard to distinguish yourself. But in high school, you nailed it, Andre. In high yeah. school, if you start reaching out at that level, something cool will happen to you when it comes to network. Mm -hmm our possibility down and the road it, it, it's the power of honesty you know and like that's something that i learned so much when i was in cars is like just be honest if you're if you if you fib a little if you play games it catches up to you and i find with people like even like the power of honesty when you're a high school student you know most high school students are nervous to call something because they say oh i don't know what to ask i'm not sure what to say they're gonna see that i don't know anything and that's the most powerful thing is when you can yes. say and be like, yes. hey, yes. I know nothing. And I want you <laughs> because I see you as a god. You're putting them on a pedestal. They're going to feel great. It's obvious. You know, it's, e it's, even it's now the, to this yes. day, the best. Yes. Yeah. Like I still use that myself. Like uh, like I try and use that when I don't know about something. Like I'll talk to you like, hey, like I'm in yes. marketing. And I, understand, I, I do this, but I don't know anything about this. And I say that you're an expert. Can you lend an ear? And they're just like. Hey man, I appreciate the honesty. I can see that you're being genuine and struggling. Here you go. But if I'm like, oh, I'm thinking of this, tell me what you think about that. It's like, well, why do you want to know? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you start yeah. playing that. Yeah. It's just, just be, just be transparent and genuine. Oh, you know what, Andres? That was fun. Isabella, do you have any funny parting shots? 
<laughs> I just say that you had some really great advice and it was really nice to listen to your story. I mean, I'm not like super familiar with you. Um, I'm just here talking to you <laughs> for the first time, but from the little that I have spoken with you, I have seen how much you have grown in your own path. And I think so many people can relate to that and um, hopefully understand and learn with you. Yeah, no, I was going to say if, if anybody has questions, by all means, my LinkedIn is Mr. Bazin, or sorry, that's my Instagram and my LinkedIn is just my name, Andre Bazin. Uh, any students or anybody else who's listening to this, if you want to add me and ask me a question, by all means, my inboxes are open and I'd be happy to answer those. That's awesome. That's very generous. And if you're afraid to contact him, Andre <laughs> wouldn't be afraid to contact <laughs> a person, but if you're afraid, contact me and I'll connect you to Andre and, uh, if sometimes, sometimes people need a liaison and Andres, yeah. you're a, you're a, a consummate salesman, but an honest and authentic one and, <laughs> and, and one who believes in moving and you've got a nice, great venture coming up. Um, we're going to keep yeah. it under wraps for now, but it's going to be launched in the new year and it's a family event. Uh, it because, is. It's a family I mean, Andre's dad is a driven, is a great guy. He's a driven guy. He's an entrepreneur. Andre's an entrepreneur. Sis is going to be involved. Like it's going to be a very cool venture that really connects to what's trending and what's going on in the workplace and what's going mm -hmm. on in the marketplace as well. So congratulations on that. I can't wait for that Thank to be you. launched. When it's launched, people will know about it. I'm not going to uh, spoil the surprise. But yeah, I want to no say worries. thanks. Thanks, Andre, so much for being with us today. You, uh, you've you been an inspiration. I hope people read this and under or listen to this and understand, you know what? I feel sometimes as he did in high school, I've had some obstacles, some things didn't work out for me, like a knee operation. And I just started re-energizing my, my, my path in different directions and choosing activities that extended your boundary and helped mm -hmm. you see what stuck to you and what was continuing to stick to you all the time. So, hey, I'm a proud man. I'm, I'm glad I've been associated with you in your life. Proud you're in my English class. Proud you're in the career development program. And uh, I wish you well. Thank you. I, I appreciate you guys extending the uh, offer for me to be part of this. It was, it was wonderful to be part of this podcast. And if you guys ever want to have me on as a repeat guest, mm -hmm. we can always talk. We'll, well, see, we'll see what the reviews are first, though. We'll see if I, people actually yeah. enjoy it. If they say, get I, out of here, it's okay. I, I understand. Just a gut feeling, <laughs> but I have a feeling you have more to say. I have a just a gut feeling. I, I, I just think have a feeling. Hit maybe twenty percent, thirty percent. We didn't we didn't even talk about my marketing agency that I started up. So I know. Yeah, there's I know. More we can bring next time. And I said to some so, people, you're the kind of person who's probably done more at twenty. What are you? Twenty two years old? Twenty three? Twenty two. Twenty two years old. You've, 22, you've done, yeah. you've done more than a lot of thirty five year olds have done. And your your resume is <laughs> chock full. But you've chosen to do that. You've chosen to step outside your boundary. Congratulations, young man. The podcast is going to come to an end. I want to thank everybody for listening. Thank you, as always, Isabella. Andre, you, take Andre. care. We'll talk yeah. soon. And that's the end of Adventures in Careerland. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.